One and all, welcome to the second part um, of uh, this week lecture. Uh, in this uh, part, I'm going to uh, provide you with some information regarding general aspects of uh, consumer behavior and decision making, and uh, what we know about this uh, from a psychological perspective. So, agenda for this part is to uh, focus on general aspects related to consumer psychology and decision making. Then we are going to consider what actually uh, uh, is a decision, um, specifically uh, related to buying stuff. And finally, we're going to focus on the process of decision-making. Let's uh, start with some brief information. Uh, who is consumer? A consumer is a person that uh, spends money and, of course, spends time, which, uh, of course, uh, you may uh, know that it's in many cases just money. Uh, most of the uh, examples that you can find in the textbook, textbook uh, focuses on money, but also, as you, you will see later, we also are going to uh, study how consumers spend time, which is really important. So consumers spend uh, money and time on products uh, which are typically goods, services, or can be also a combination of the two. For understanding consumer behavior, uh, preferences of a consumer is also really important to take into account whether uh, people buy goods or services, because consequences, specifically emotional consequences of buying the two, can be really different. Consumption uh, choices, uh, in this case, are specific decisions that uh, consumers make in order uh, to uh, specifically allocate the resources, uh, in this case, or money, or regarding time. Understanding consumer behavior requires uh, quite a lot of knowledge. So let's see uh, why consumer behavior and studying consumer behavior, uh, it's really complex. Uh, that requires interdisciplinary approach. Uh, as you probably may know from the textbook, this textbook emphasizes that there are at least five important sources uh, for knowledge on consumer behavior. On one hand, we have psychology, we have sociology, anthropology, economics, and neuroscience. Of course, in this course, we are not going to uh, learn about all those domains. Uh, we are going to focus on psychology, economics, and partially on neuroscience. One of the important fields in uh, studying consumer behavior is behavioral economics. Some people, like uh, uh, well-known Kahneman, get even uh, Nobel Prizes for putting some fundaments under this uh, field. But on the other hand, we have the most interesting, I would say, field, which is neuroscience. And many people nowadays, they do study uh, brain in order to understand not only how uh, we function, how uh, we make decisions, but spe specifically, they focus on trying to understand how specific brain mechanisms are involved uh, in explaining or uh, determining consumer behavior. Okay, of course it's a psychology program, so uh, we are going to focus on those psychological aspects. Mainly we're going to investigate specific motivation or drives that uh, can help us to predict uh, consumer behavior studies related to uh, goals and specific inventing incentives, um, for instance, priming, and we are going to see some studies on how priming can force people to think specifically about um, goods and how that can influence uh, not only the decision, decisions, but also their perspective on um, other people. Uh, partially, we are going to focus on studies on personality and self-concept, more um, in depth, we are going to uh, uh, see what learning studies can tell us 
about uh, consumer behavior and finally partially uh, we are going to uh, see what studies on attitude formation and change uh, bring to the understanding of consumer behavior. On one hand, studying consumers is fun because uh, consumers are everywhere, everywhere, consumption is everywhere. So uh, it's, a, I would say, daily life, situ uh, typical situation. Studying consumers uh, can happen from a perspective of marketing and, of course, consumer psychology. Economics gives us a slightly different perspective. On one hand, we have this macroeconomical perspective. On the other hand, we have this uh, microeconomics. Uh, uh, Macroeconomy uh, focuses on broader picture, tries to aggregate uh, notions on uh, how people consume in general, how uh, products are made, produced, uh, sell, and also uh, focuses on specific trading choices. So uh, it's uh, related more to how uh, specific businesses function. On the other hand, microeconomics focuses on individuals and studies how individuals make uh, decisions. So, in economics, we distinguish between macroeconomics, which focuses uh, uh, on a market as a whole, and how elements uh, of market interact with each other. For instance, a relationship between stock markets, labor markets, uh, or global markets. On the other hand, we have microeconomics, which uh, uh, blossomed uh, in years when more advanced mathematical analysis was available to researchers and that enabled uh, to uh, describe consumers' uh, behavior or decisions uh, making in more formal way. And that helped um, researchers to create a model of rational decision making or rational individual economic decision making. And recently based on knowledge on economics and psychology, a new field emerged, which is behavioral economics. It's a recent branch that uh, matches microeconomics, specific theories related to rational choice, and studies that empirically in order to see when people deviate from rationality. You can ask a question, why? do economics. In this course, we are going to focus on a behavior economic approach. You will learn, based on what we know from economics and also from you know from psychology, uh, how people behave uh, if we uh, would consider them as rational beings. Also, you will learn that people not always make rational decisions. So we will try to understand why people deviate from rational decision-making uh, model and even why, then, why they deviate um, from the rational decision-making models in a consistent manner. Also, based on what we know from economics and psychology, and as I mentioned partially based on neuroscience, is that how um, we spend and consume and how that affects our health and well-being. As you probably know, many people may think that having a lot of money can lead to happiness, but as you will see la later, it's not always the case. And finally, based on uh, economics and psychology, we're going to learn how a decision-making process and behavior of consumer can be influenced, how it can be developed. How can be nudged? Before we do that, we're going to focus on really simple stuff. One of the most simple stuff is this specific relationship that describes what happens 
uh, in the market, what happens, uh, what influences uh, consumer behavior. This is a relationship between price and demand. So in this, uh, let's say, a law, we see that if demand increases, price goes down. If demands go up, price go down. So this is a negative relationship. Let's consider a few basic questions on how consumers or people who manage the market can behave depending on whether it's elastic or not. First question is that, let's assume that um, that you are going to sell salt. Would you expect that uh, when selling a salt, the relationship between demand curve and the price would be elastic or inelastic? Why would be that? So would you expect that if you increase the price, will that affect demand or other way around? Would demand affect the price? Let's consider another question. If a product has an inelastic demand curve, what then marketers do? What would be implication for them in this case? On the other hand, if a product has an elastic demand curve, what those marketers should do? So if demand changes along with price, what then marketers can do? Should they change the price? How they should advertise a product? And finally, Let's consider a question: What are customers? Uh, sorry, why are customers more important to a firm than, let's say, an employees? Let's uh, go beyond this uh, inelastic and demand curve and ask this question: uh, Why many companies say this this question? Why customers are more important uh, important than employees? Lastly. I would like to uh, mention that all this knowledge regarding uh, how consumers make decisions led uh, the uh, people who build theories, researches to create a few principles of uh, decision making theory. First of all, they've asked a question what does it mean to make a decision? When studying, making uh, decisions, they've concluded that there are many elements that are important to understand uh, consumer decision-making. Preferences, decision rules. So what sh that's the last, uh, next question. Which criteria can guide decision-making? We know that preferences, but what else? How preferences can be created? What's influence of marketers on preferences. When we can say that specific decision is rational, and of course, on the other hand, what we can say if we would like to define an irrational decision. Those people who create uh, uh, decision theory, they came up with uh, uh, many different solutions. And for those solutions we can take into account different aspects. We can take into account decisions that are made under saturnity when all data is uh, given, uh, when we know everything uh, about the decisions that we want to make, product that we want to buy, and the consequences of making this decision, when we are certain, certain what will happen. On the other hand, we have decisions under uncertainty. So uh, when not all information are available. Then 
we may have decisions under risk. When we know that some elements can happen, we know the probabilities, but still not all information is available. And finally, those people who theorize about defining uh, decisions, they take into account that lots of decisions are made under ignorance when no data is available. What's the impact of this knowledge? You would see later.